Maybe yeah. from God's perspective, this is what golf looks like. I'm here with beloved pastor and author Max Lucado. He has a brand new book out called You Were Made for This Moment. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about the book, of course, but we're going to do it with a little competition involved. You are an avid golfer. Is that correct? Well, um, avid try to be golfer. <laughs> I feel like everyone golfer. says that yeah, when they're a yeah, golfer, yeah, but yeah. you love the sport. I do, I do. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun with a quick game of putt-putt while we talk about uh, your book. The obstacles are going to get harder, but we're okay. starting with... Kind of like life. <laughs> exactly. Three copies of your book. So okay. do you feel like going first? All you good right. with that? All, All right. right. So is the idea to hit the book or avoid the book? That, it depends how much you hate it. It's whoa, your book. <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay. And while you're putting, okay. okay, so the book is called You Were Made for This Moment. It's kind of the book for when you've been in perpetual winter. So why this book is the obvious question, and why right now? Oh, man. <laughs> I can't focus on your question. I know, I I'm know. Putting. Go ahead. See if you can no, get a two-putt um, on this. You know, I, um, you know, I'm a pastor, right? And um, when the when the pandemic uh, was really reaching its early peak, I know we're in another peak, but when it was reaching its early peak, I was uh, scheduled to present a series of sermons. And so I began trying to think, is there a, a story in the Bible? Look at that. Oh, is there okay. a story in the Bible Whew. of uh, a global calamity? Right. And Which there are a there few are calamities few. in the Bible. There There's no shortage few. of them for sure. Yep. It could have gone with Joseph. could have gone with Moses. Uh, could have gone with the book of Acts. You can keep talking. I'm not Look that serious that. of a golfer, obviously. You whacked that ball. <laughs> you don't like my book. You just I, whacked that's, that That's ball obviously right it. That I'm like, book. I didn't like it. I didn't like reading it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, um, I thought Esther, the story of Esther, is <laughs> you're having trouble. I am having trouble. <laughs> so that's going to be a four for me it. and a two for you, you on the first it. hole. You're keeping score for me? You All right. It. This is exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. So go ahead and finish about Esther. Yeah, yeah. The beauty of Esther is that uh, it is a dramatic story of God's provision for people during a, an insurmountable challenge. I mean, the, the uh, most powerful two people in the world, King Xerxes and Haman, his right-hand man, have decided to eliminate the Jewish people. Right. Just wipe them out. And what can the Jewish people do about it? And then the other two characters, Esther, who has become queen, and Mordecai, who is uh, also in the cabinet, uh, they've kept their Jewish identity a secret. It's a powerful story of how God awakens them to the opportunity that lies before them and uses them to save the chosen people from genocide. And so it's a story written for those seasons in our lives when we feel like the whole world, that we're just completely outnumbered, outmaneuvered, yeah. that we don't have any options and we don't know where to turn. Of course, the the, the great uh, trivia question of Esther is that it's one of the two books in the Bible where God's name is not mentioned. Yes, and we're going to get into that, actually. We're going to transition to hole number two because okay. I want to talk more about that because I think it ties in perfectly to what we've been let's, going through. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm not going to tell anybody that I won that first <laughs> Okay, so Max Lucado just told me to go first on hole two, and I think it's so he can try to find out the advantage of putting through the Batman castle. <laughs> okay, so we just talked about how Esther is one of the only two books in the Bible where God is not mentioned. And so, first of all, I think that it's, it's interesting how that relates to our life, because I, I believe that there are times, and especially this past year and a half, it doesn't always feel like God is there. So can you talk a little bit about the book of Esther, the story of Esther, and how it relates to us today? Yeah. The name of God does not appear in the book of Esther. Oh, that was so close. That was so close. <sighs> this is going to be rough for me. This is going to be one. really rough for me. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to have to two-putt it out here. There you go. Uh, but the fingerprint, fingerprints of God are on every page. Get it? Oh, oh my goodness. Man. Good grief. Man. 
I also um, we're just recommend we're cheating. We're on putting. We're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take, that's four putts in. I'm just moving the ball because I don't want this entire interview to be Becca trying to get the ball for the Batman castle. I always joke, if I ever write a book on golf, it's going to be called How I Line Up My Fourth Putt. <laughs> well, obviously I need that today. I'm so sorry, sir. Continue. <laughs> so um, uh, if Esther, if the story of Esther is written to help us face those times of I call them winter, yeah. uh, they're real winter times of life. Uh, during those seasons of struggle, many times we don't sense the presence of God. Yeah. And we wonder where God is. We wonder why God doesn't act. We wonder if God cares, if he notices. And um, in the book of Esther, uh, I think, tells us that God does not have to be loud to be prominent. Uh, he doesn't have to be dramatic to be decisive. It's in his, in kind of the quiet sovereignty of God that he does his work. It's know? not the mountaintop exactly. loud, but it's, he's, hey, he's, you might not always see him, mm -hmm. but he's always moving, right. he's always there. Behind the scenes, involved in the details, shuffling things around. Uh, for those readers and listeners who've never read the book of Esther, I cannot wait until you see how God turns everything on its Ed. Chapter 9, the last chapter, uh, begins with the phrase, uh, and, and things were turned around. Mm. There's some plot twists around. in that story. Oh, what a plot twist. Yeah, especially oh. you have some evil characters in yeah. there. Yeah. And I again, I think that's something that all of us can yeah. relate to. Yeah, and it's a, it gets a bit complex yeah. because you have the good guy, Mordecai, Haman, the bad guy, Xerxes, the clueless king, <laughs> And you have Xerxes who can't sleep one night, Mordecai who's praying for deliverance, Haman who shows up at the castle wanting to kill uh, Mordecai, and, and the king wakes up, he can't sleep, and here comes Haman, and he says, what can I do to honor the man I, I wanna honor? And, and, and Haman is such a narcissist that he thinks the king's talking Me. about him. Yeah. It's just the greatest. It's just the greatest because now the king really wants to honor Mordecai, who Haman wants to kill. Yeah. It's just, it couldn't be better. I love it too, go ahead and take your putt. Um, okay. I love it too, because I feel like Esther is kind of the story that is used in women's Bible studies a lot, mm -hmm. but it really is the story for everyone. It has, like you said, the villains, the twists, the turns, <laughs> the stories of God's providence, maybe not in the game of golf all the time. Yeah. Um, but it's what I think all of us need to be reminded that we're not alone in those seasons of winter. Oh, oh the sand I'm in the trap. sand trap. I need a tiny, tiny, tiny wedge <laughs> to hit out of that. And go ahead and take your vital putt. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's, it's a story that really does highlight uh, the courage of a strong female character, and that's so inspiring. It's also I didn't a story. set you up just a compliment. Just well, <laughs> it, it is, though. Uh, and it's also a story of, of two people who had a wake-up call. We, we tend to make a big deal about Mordecai and Esther, uh, how heroic they are, and indeed they are, but at first they're not. Yeah. They're keeping their faith a secret. Yeah. They're three generations into exile. You know, the temple is a memory uh, for their grandparents, not for them. They have assimilated they have assimilated and they have compromised. Yeah. I mean, one works for the king, the other sleeps with the king. Right. I mean, how much more? So they don't enter the story uh, as um, super saints, and neither do we. Yeah. Neither yeah. Neither do we. It's sometimes you hear, you know, the story of Esther is, oh, for such a time as this. And yeah. You have to remember that there was a lot of fear. Uh, there's a little hill there. There's a hill there. There's a little hill there. I need a caddy. I know. I'm sorry. I can't help you with that. You this is mini golf. Read that putt. <laughs> Let me hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay. You ready? There. Oh, we there got you go. It. There we you go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go first on this one, or do you want me to no, go I want first you again? To. You want me to go first? <laughs> okay. Uh, so while I putt. Um, you know, we talked about how this book is for the person in perpetual winter. We've talked about how Esther is a story of hope for when you're going through the hard time, even when you don't feel courageous. Could you maybe give a little bit of encouragement for the person that just feels stuck in winter? Like it's not going to change. It's not going to get better. I think the story of Esther helps us to have a, a big, a view of a big God 
Huh? Oh my oh! goodness. Oh my goodness. On the serious question too. And not only that, you bounced it off the back. That was okay. You brought it back. Okay, there might be a comeback coming for you, Max Lucado. How, how did you put spin on the <laughs> It was totally intentional, clearly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a little speechless. <laughs> I apologize. I know I'm, I'm like, hey, give, give us some hope. Give us this serious That's moment right. and watch me That's get a right. hole in one. That's <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. I don't think that'll ever be repeated in the history of Esther Golf. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, not. Oh, oh so what if that close, had gone too. I know. That would have been amazing. We that would have had two trick better. shots on our hand. Oh, well. Um, what was your question? <laughs> Hope for the person going through perpetual winter. Let God be bigger. Let God be bigger. Remember that all the books in the Bible need to be read thinking, what was the intent of the writer uh, for the first readers? Uh, I know that we as uh, the secondary readers benefit much, but really it's good to think, okay, when, when, this, when this narration was created initially, it was created so that Jews in exile would have courage. Every other book uh, in the Old Testament uh, was, was written to help the Jews who were in Jerusalem or in Israel. But uh, this story is set apart because it speaks to Jews in exile. And so what it says to Jews in exile is, you may think that King Xerxes, or his other name, Ahasuerus, which sounds like a good sneeze It does to me. sound like a good sneeze, uh, or a dinosaur. You may, yeah, you may think that they're in control, but they're really not. They're really not. God can flip everything on its head at the turn of a moment. And that's, I think, the second point. And that is, as far as you know, deliverance is just five minutes away. Today, it could happen. Because it, it, in the story, it came at the time that no one expected no it. No one expected it. And, you know, Esther was kind of setting herself up for, I could die by going to the king mm -hmm. and asking this of Exactly, him. exactly. But then deliverance came. Yeah, and even that had some plot twists because at first the king's like, I can't do it. Yeah. And then, it, you know, that turned around even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They worked the system. Yeah. They worked the system so that would happen. Yeah. It's not a hyper-religious book, too. Uh, there's, there's no sacrifices. There's no reference to the Torah. Of course, there's no visits to Jerusalem or the temple. It is a story that speaks to the person who's struggling to move into a spiritual mindset because it says, you, you know, you don't have to have all the religious acraments to, to have a relationship with yeah. God. And so it's, a, it's, it's got a lot of angles to it. Because if you're in that tough time mm -hmm. and you can't see where God is, that's when you need that story of deliverance. Exactly, exactly. We're going to keep talking about this, but moving on. Do you want to take your one final putt out of the I'm same I'm a little time? embarrassed. <laughs> you, you killed me. We can, we can just you call this like me. a five putt and just move on if you yeah, want. Yeah, I mean, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 how much do I owe you? All right, so hole number four. Would you like to go first? Would you like, last time I got a hole in one when I'm I went first. first. You're going time. first this I'm time? First. All right. That's the magic right there. Yes. I'm gonna whoever, let you putt before we get into the next interview first. question. I'm gonna let you have full really? concentration on this. Okay. okay. <laughs> Boy, look at this. It could, it could be a hole in one. It sure could, it sure could. Let's try. Oh no. Okay, that's not the worst thing oh, in the world no. though, right? Okay, here we go. Look okay, okay. Okay, a hole in two. A hole in two. You know what? For this. Uh, Was this a par 10? Yes, this is a par 10, exactly. So, so really you're far not, under yeah, par. You're yeah. doing great, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, one of the things that you announced recently in your personal life is that you have some health things going on. Is it an, an ascending aortic aneurysm? Is Look that correct? Look at you. You've done your homework. <laughs> yeah. You wrote this book before this diagnosis. How have you personally kind of looked back on what you wrote? Were there times where you were frustrated being like, I don't know if that's right anymore? Or mm. how did it kind of, did it encourage you even mm -hmm. when you needed it? Yeah, yeah, it, and that's a very perceptive question and observation. Of course, the big idea of Esther is that there's nothing too great for God. Yeah. Just nothing. What we perceive as the impossible mountain is so simple for him. Yeah. And that the big message of Esther is let God be big, and as you let God be big, your problems come into uh, the right size, into perspective. 
And so that's exactly what I needed. Uh, you know, this diagnosis of an uh, aneurysm uh, on my aortic, ascending aortic vessel uh, came as a surprise, yeah. and it's a pretty serious diagnosis. Um, in the first four or five days, um, I gave myself kind of a C minus in, in processing it. But I think, I mean, I love that yeah. you're honest with that because sometimes the news comes and it yeah. is hard to immediately, mm -hmm. you know, we've been talking about the story of Esther. Esther wasn't brave right away. Exactly. Like we've been talking That's a great about. point. Yeah. That's a great point. And I've been healthy my whole life, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and so I've, I've, this is my first, per I've helped a lot of other people talk through this, but this was my first time to to hear those kind of words uh, from a doctor. As I processed it, as I uh, uh, had a few more conversations with people who understood this better than I, I, I feel like I've found a place of peace. Mm. Uh, and, and it was, a, uh, in fact, a, a bit of a miracle because it came in a, in a prayer time about a week after I'd received the diagnosis. I felt it lift, felt the fear lift, and I, it has not returned. Uh, the diagnosis is still there. Yeah, the, the, the scary thing is still, still there. there. Yeah, uh, but I'm okay. Yeah, I am. I truly am. Yeah, except when you make hormone well, ones. That, well, that, that bothers me. We'll say, well, In fact, I felt my heart pick up. Just a bit <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my goodness! Don't put that pressure. Go easy on me. Go easy on me. <laughs> I now, will I, see I what I can do. A little five putt here would make my heart better. Oh. Hey, so that was just for you. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. I it's don't gonna... mean to say anything, but nobody's ever made that putt before. I don't. I can't get it through the little tunnel. Okay. And okay, Got three. It. That is okay. Got okay. Got it. Uh, we'll be right back with our final hole. Final. And we'll okay. see how what the score is uh, doing in just a second here as well. <laughs> We are to the final hole with Max Lucado. So when I prepared for this interview, I was not expecting the solid lead you would have on me. You are sitting at a nine right now overall for our first four holes. I am at a 16. So with that, the final hole, as you can see, there's no obstruction, but we do have a water hazard. <laughs> Whoever loses the entire game. Gets sprayed. So unless you do like an eight putt, you will be spraying me in the face. Are you ready for this? I can't do it. Your, your, your husband's watching. I know. I, you know, he look, he's already laughing. He, he's got to get a kick out of this. Does he want to do this himself? <laughs> so do you, do you want to go first? Okay, so this is just a straight this putt. This is a straight up putt, yeah. Okay, okay. We're calling this the spray putt. Don't yes. spray it. Don't spray it. It's our water no. hazard. Your water hazard. I couldn't get approval for an actual okay. water hazard Excuse in the video me. studio. Excuse me. Yeah. Line, line it up. up. Got to look at it from all angles. Is there, is there a wind? Yeah. No, I think think the wind's died down. <laughs> okay, here we go. We can do this. Oh, oh the sand you just love again. that sand trap, don't you? I'm gonna get sprayed. My goodness. Okay. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. I'm just gonna you, go ahead and take you, my putt, and we're really gonna see. Spray a, old pastor, would you? I mean, this is your first time. Oh, no! <laughs> what does that even mean? What hazard does that bring with it? Honestly, That's... at this point, I don't think there's any way that I can come back, so. Okay. You can do the honor. You sure? Yes, now before you do that, uh, may, You Were Made For This Moment is available anywhere books are sold for the person who is struggling, for the person who has had a rough 2020, 2021, Life just hasn't let up. It's yeah. a story of hope. Anything yeah. else you want to add? You know, it is a tough time. Yeah. It is a tough time. And there are some of you uh, just participating in this golf tournament. Uh, and you've, you're worried. You're, you're anxious. You're weary. Uh, just worn out. And, and may God bless you. May God bless you. I, I really think that God places us on the planet on purpose with a purpose. And this is, we're here. This was our assignment, to live in this day, uh, in this generation, uh, at this zip code. And so there must be a reason. And so let's trust our good God. He will lead us through this. And let's be that voice of hope that the world needs. 
And with that, Max Lucado, really go ahead. Feel bad. I know. I really, just I go. Can't do this. I planned this what interview. What if I miss? What if I miss? Right, just right in my face. <laughs> you were made for this moment. Available anywhere books are sold. <laughs>